less than 4.8 multiply with 8. We can multiply with 8 by using doubles because 8 is an even number. We can use a number line, the associative property of multiplication, or the distributive property. We can use doubles to multiply 3 times 8 as 3 times 4 plus 3 times 4. The 8 can be broken apart into a 4 plus 4. 8 is an even number, so we break it apart into double 4s. And 3 times 4 is equal to 12. We double the 12. That's 12 plus 12, which is equal to 24. So 3 times 8 is equal to 24. We can use a number line to skip count by 8s. 3 times 8 is equal to 3 jumps of 8. We jump 8 to 16 to 24, so 3 times 8 is equal to 24. Now notice this number line skips by 2s. It goes 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. So we skip count by 8s over 4 of the lines. 2, 4, 6, 8, so we're at 8, 2, 4, 6, 8, we're at 16, then 2, 4, 6, 8, now we're at 24. So be careful if your number line is skipping by 2s, or if it's going in order from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you need to look at the scale in the number line to make sure you're making the correct jumps. We can use the associative property of multiplication to help us multiply with 8. We have 5 times 8. We can break the 8 into a 2 times 4. Then we have 5 times 2 times 4. We can change the grouping by moving the parentheses. We put it around the 5 and the 2. 5 times 2 is equal to 10. We multiply the 10 times the 4. That's equal to 40. It's a lot easier to multiply by 10. The associative property says we can change the grouping and the answer will be the same. We can find the product for 8 times 7. We can break apart the 8 into a 4 times 2. So we have 4 times 2 times 7. We can change the grouping with the associative property and put the parentheses around the 2 and the 7 and multiply them together first to get a 14. Now we have 4 times 14. And we can break this 4 apart into a 2 plus 2. So now we have 2 plus 2 times 14. We distribute this 2 to the 14 plus this 2 to the 14. So we have 2 times 14 plus 2 times 14. That's equal to 28 plus 28. We add the products and we get 56. So we used the associative property of multiplication and the distributive property to help us find the product of some larger factors. So let's try that again. We can find the product for 8 times 9. 8 times 9, we can break apart the 8 into a 4 times 2. We can change the grouping with the associative property. So now we have 4 times and then 2 times 9 in parentheses. We do the parentheses first. 2 times 9 is equal to 18. So we have 4 times 18. And we can break apart this 4 into a 2 plus 2 and use the distributive property to distribute this 2 times 18 plus this 2 times 18. 2 times 18 is equal to 36, plus this 2 times 18, which is equal to 36. We add the products together. 36 plus 36 is equal to 72. So 8 times 9 is equal to 72. We used both properties to help us solve a larger problem. See? There are many strategies to find a product. There's more than one way to find a product using doubles when both factors are even numbers. 6 is an even number and 8 is an even number. So we can break apart the 6 into a 3 plus 3 and then multiply them by 8 
using the distributive property, we can break apart the 6 as a 2 times 3. And we can multiply that way. We can break apart the 8 into a 4 plus 4 because it's even. Then we have 6 times 4 plus 4. We use the distributive property to distribute the 4s to the 6 and add the products. We can break apart 6 times 8 into 6 times 2 times 4. And we can find the product that way. There's many ways to find a product when using doubles when both factors are even numbers. Lisa is baking four loaves of bread. She needs eight cups of flour for each loaf. How many cups of flour will she need? That means we've got four groups of eight. That's four times eight. We can use the associative property of multiplication. We can break apart the four into a two times two and change the grouping so we have two times two times eight. We do in the parentheses first, two times eight is equal to 16. We multiply that by this two, and two times 16 is equal to 32 cups of flour. We can also use the distributive property, and we could break the four into a two plus two. So notice the distributive property used plus, and the associative property of multiplication used times here because 2 times 2 is equal to 2 plus 2. So that used multiplication sign. The distributive property is using an addition sign. We distribute the 2 to the 8 plus this 2 to the 8. We have 2 times 8 plus 2 times 8. That's equal to 16 plus 16. We add the products, and it's equal to 32 cups of flour. So either way, we got the same answer, didn't we? Using the distributive property, we can solve 6 times 8 by breaking the 8 into a 4 plus 4. Now we have 6 times 4 plus 4. We distribute the 6 to the 4 plus this 6 to that 4. We have 6 times 4 plus 6 times 4. We broke the 8 into 4 and 4. Now we have 6 times 4 plus 6 times 4. That's 24 plus 24. We add the products. 24 plus 24 is equal to 48, so 6 times 8 is equal to 48. 8 is an even number, so we could break it into 4 plus 4 as doubles. We can make product pyramids by finding two factors for the product above them. We have the product 16, we can put in the factors 2 and 8 because 2 times 8 is equal to 16. For these squares, we have a product of 2. We can put 1 times 2 is equal to 2. For 8, we can say 2 times 4 is equal to 8. Notice that the 2 and the 8 have this shared factor of 2. For 56, we can say 7 times 8 is equal to the product 56. The 7 as a product would be 7 times 1. The 8 could be 1 times 8, and they share the factor 1. Now, when you get into sixth grade, you're going to learn about factor trees. And you'll actually be able to continue on with this 8 as a 2 times 4 and the 4 as a 2 times 2, and you'll just keep coming down. But that's not until 6th grade, okay? What's important now is that you try to memorize the multiplication facts before 4th grade. Then your life will be very easy when it comes to math because you'll go quicker. Can we tell if this multiplication sentence is true or false? Is 3 times 4 times 2 equal to 24. We could change the grouping, couldn't we? The associative property lets us move the parentheses, and we can do 3 times 4 times 2. 3 times 4 is 12, 
and 12 times 2 is equal to 24. So this one is true. Is this one true or false? It says 2 times 3 times 8 is equal to 2 times 3 times 8. Is that true or false? Well, the associative property lets us regroup them. So instead of the 3 times 8 being in parentheses, we now have the 2 times 3 in parentheses. So yes, this multiplication sentence is also true. The grouping was just changed. It says to find the value of each shape. We have a green triangle times a green triangle is equal to 25. Well, both factors must be the same number because they're the same shape. Some number times some number is equal to 25, and it's the same number. If you can remember your 5 times table, 5 times 5 is equal to 25. So the green triangle is equal to 5. For this one, we have an orange square times 9 is equal to 9. The product is the same as the factor 9. See that? And the identity property states that the product of any number and 1 is that number. So in order for the product to be the same as this factor, the missing factor must be a 1. So the orange square is equal to 1. In our next lesson, we're going to multiply with 9. And there's all kinds of tricks we can use to multiply with 9. So remember, you can use a number line, you can use doubles, you can use the associative or distributive property. You can even use arrays to help you multiply with 8. And 8 is an even number, so it's easy to break it apart into smaller factors that we already know. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you have a really good day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.